Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I am Taylor Elizabeth. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, I don't know why, but you might as well just go ahead and hit it. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you can know when your girl got new videos. So, um, this is not a hair tutorial. This is not a intro to a, a workout. This is not um, me talking about relationships or vaginal health. This is me expressing my feelings, my thoughts, my concerns about the state of the world at the current moment. So if for whatever reason you've been living under a rock, I don't know how you could be at this moment in time, but if you have been living under a rock, I'll just give you a little synopsis of what's going on. So another black man has been killed by the police. His name is George Floyd. Uh, he was said to have had a um a forged twenty dollar bill come to find out the twenty dollar bill was actually real um the police officers detained him and then they somehow he got out the car they pinned him down on the ground had their knee in his neck for all of nine minutes the video is 10 minutes long and you literally watch this man cry out for his deceased mom um and you hear his last words of his life. Um, and so we've had enough. And when I say we, I mean black people, I mean the world, clearly. Um, but you may be under their rock, so you don't know. The world has had enough at this point. And when I say the world, I mean the whole entire world. From New York to Miami to LA to Portland to Denver to Texas to Australia to England. The world has had enough. And so um, I'm just gonna share my thoughts about what's going on, how I personally feel. Um, you may like what I say, you may agree with what I say. Um, this is me. I really could care less if you agree, if you don't agree. This is just my view, what I think, how I feel. Uh, eventually your girl will be monetized. I'm claiming it in Jesus name. And if this video causes people to not want to work with me, um, then that's fine because what's meant for me will always be for me. And um, God knows this. So I'm just here to use my platform to spread awareness um, and to give people a place to vent and to be okay with sharing your true feelings. Um, so how do I feel personally about everything that's going on? Um, a part of me is angry. I'm very frustrated. I'm sick of tired of being sick and tired. Um, I'm hurt that this country that I live in is supposed to be the land of the freed, home of the brave, and who is free? How, Sway? because men and women and children are getting gunned down in the street by people that are supposed to protect us. And it seems as if the world and our country has been turning a blind eye to it up until now. Um, and the reason why I think the world is so woke right now is because we have been locked up in the house for just about three to four months. Um, and so since we've been locked up in the house, all we have to do is be on our phones, be in on the TV, on social media. We don't have anything else to do. Therefore, since we don't have anything else to do, then why not go out and protest? And I'm not speaking down on being people protesting at all, because honestly, if your girl didn't have Crohn's and if I wasn't taking all them meds over there, I would be out protesting. Um, so, yeah, like I am. I'm scared. I'm scared because I have a brother. I have two brothers. Um, I have a dad. I have uncles. And to know that they could leave the house and never return simply because they got stopped by police officers, that's scary. And white people, I'm just going to be honest with you, that's something that you would never understand because I'm sure you don't ever sit and think like, oh, my child could not come home because he got killed by a police officer because of the color of his skin. It's, it's just mind boggling to me that here we are in 2020 and we are still dealing with issues that was going on in our world in the 1950s and the 60s. 
um, slavery. Like, it's just mind blown that we can move all these other agendas to the forefront, yet black people are still left <laughs> in the back. Like, I, I just can't understand. I can't get with it. Um, now, how do I feel about protesting versus the rioting and different things of that nature? Um, everybody has been quoting Martin Luther King. Um, as far as like the reason why people are rioting is because they feel they are unheard, which is true. Um, I don't know. I don't feel like they're right. Right now, people are, are upset. They are angry. You want me to care about your business and you don't even care about my life? Like, come on, business and my life. Like, it don't, it, it don't go hand in hand. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, life, a business. Something you can replace. Can't replace somebody when they go. Um, as far as protesting goes, a lot of people have, um, on social media, I have seen people speak out as far as we don't have organization. This is complete chaos. And a lot of those people have been um, sorority and fraternity leaders. It, they have been people that are in faith. And when I say in faith, I mean Christians, um, pastors, ministers, those things. Um, and me personally, I feel like those people that are speaking out and saying that it's complete chaos, especially people that have leadership roles, where are you? That's honestly just how I feel. Where are you? You can criticize what other people are doing, but you're not out there. As far as I can remember, I'm not in a sorority fraternity, but I know enough information to know that a lot of them, um, their history is built on them standing up for African-American rights. Um, and so to know that you have people out here saying, why are people out there? Why, why it's just chaos. Well, if you don't want it to be chaos, go out there help them you organize something don't just keep talking down on somebody uh, i also feel like we as black people we got to do better this is not a competition who is more woke than the next like some people protest protesting is not for everybody i've protested before numerous amount of times i grew up protesting for things um for women's rights to civil rights all different things if you live in this house you're gonna have a view knowledge of something and you're gonna fight for something that's just how it is in this house so i know protesting i love protesting i'm a very vocal person so that's something that i like to do so you have people that protest but you can't say that you more woke because you protesting versus somebody else posting and i had to get with the program because i'm gonna be honest i was one of those people at first i'm like who are you to make a post and you making a post that keeps being repeated but you not saying nothing some people are just not that. So this is not a competition. Like as long as we are making awareness of the issue that is at hand, police, brut pr 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 police brutality, systematic racism, that's all that honestly matters at this point. Um, I feel like we just got to do better. Um, even us as black people, we want them to care about us. And a lot of times we don't care about us. And that's just the God on the truth. We don't. We still dealing with light skin versus dark skin. Like we're all black. When we go out our front door, they don't see light skin versus dark skin. They just see you a black woman, you a black man, and that's it. So we all need to come together. Um, I've been seeing a lot of people post as far as like black owned businesses and different things like this. So stay tuned to my Instagram because I'm going to start um, promoting black owned businesses. I already have been doing it for a while. I mean, if you have been watching videos, then you know my skin is brought to you by Beauty Addicts. My lips is brought to you by Beauty Addicts and so are my lashes. And uh, as far as I can remember, that's a black owned business. Um now, this shirt that I have on is not a black-owned business. It is from Fashion Nova, but I am in love with it. So, that's why I had to rock it because this is what we are fighting for, equality. Like, simple, common sense, but clearly not that common. Um, but, yeah, I'm just really, I'm frustrated. I'm tired. Like, I'm scared, honestly. Like, 
this is scary to know that like you could walk out your door and not come back because you got killed by police officers um and then another thing <laughs> and i may get some you know some dms or whatnot about this but this is just how i feel i see a lot of posts saying that um i don't feel like i need to educate white people well i grew up in a house where a lot of times they just don't know they don't if you think about it a lot of us have been in households where we have because these things weren't taught to us in school then our parents and our grandparents to teach us at home that's what they taught us just like they weren't taught at school, their grandparents and their parents weren't too concerned about them learning about African-American culture. So, and what to do and what not to do. A lot of times they just don't know. And so you do have races. I'm not gonna say we don't, we do have races. And those people, they know. And even if they don't know, they could care less. But the people who are not racist and they honestly just don't know, instead of, judging them and being rude and mean and looking at them like they crazy educate them and i'm gonna like give you an example so i was in high school and like trayvon martin had passed and things were going on different that and the third and my mom i came home and i was upset about something my mom was like okay so are you going to fall into the stereotype of the angry black woman or are you going to use this time to educate because then after this, they won't be able to say that they didn't know that they couldn't do that. Um, and so <laughs> that's what I really believe. Like, I'm sorry. I believe that this is a two-way street. Like we, we got to be out there fighting and speaking for ourselves, but we also need to take the time to like, listen, educate them. You may not want to tell them everything, but hey, point them in the right direction. This is what you can read. This is what you can, this is the video that you can watch. I'm going to be honest, up until recently, I did not know about um, Black Wall Street. That was something that I did not learn. And I'm African American. So how do you expect for them to know about that? You get what I'm saying? Like, it's a lot of stuff that... I'm African-American and I don't know about African-Americans. So show them grace. Um, I'm not saying be light on the, the matter, but show them grace. Like, I don't know. I, I believe that we need to have a diverse friendship as well. So I personally have about trying to think i have at least four white friends four and they are genuine white friends and i mean people that check up on me um people who call people who dm me people who support everything that i do people who um throughout this time they have dm me text me um may post themselves speaking out uh, about this matter I think that is very important to have a diverse circle of friends. I have not always had that. I have not always promoted that. But at this time, I think that that is very, very important. Um, we can learn from one another. They can teach us, we can teach them. In this day and time, Things are still so segregated. And if you live in the South, you definitely know. Things are so still very segregated. I live in a middle-class neighborhood, predominantly white. Um, yeah, predominantly white. I go to a majority white church. So I'm saying that because a lot of times you have to be uncomfortable. You have to put yourselves in uncomfortable positions and environments to make a change. My mother was strategic from deciding that we were going to go to a, a predominantly white church. We always went to a black church. And when we went to a black church, when that one white person would come in every blue moon, we all turn around and look like, what you doing here? Like, do you not know this is a black church? Like, why are you here? No, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. Um, and so I do go to a predominantly white church. I love my church. Love, love, love. My church is, at first, we were like one of the only few black people that went to our church. And now the church is full of all different ethnicities. 
So be the change that you want to see. We want to have diverse diversity and equality. Be the change that you want to see. Like, it's really just that simple, y'all. I mean, it really is. So, um, if you watch my other videos, <laughs> my life update video, then, you know, your girl don't have a job right now. Um, but previous to Corona, I had two jobs and one of my jobs, the people that work there, uh, even management was predominantly African American. And then my other job, um, which was my main job, um, was predominantly white. And I was the minority for sure in that environment, a uh, preschool teacher assistant. It is very, very hard working in predominantly white businesses. People don't never, they don't, we talk about living in a predominantly white world, but working in a predominantly white <laughs> business, a business that you know for a fact that does not support you, a business that you know for a fact believes and is against everything that you believe and has been vocal about that. It is hard to be able to say, okay, I have to go in, I'm here to get my money, but these people don't like me, they tolerate me, and they don't support me at all. It's hard. They're not genuine. That is hard. People never talk about that. And I'm not necessarily speaking on my actual job. I'm just talking about in general being in white spaces in the workplace. It is hard. Um, if you are dealing with something of that nature, don't hesitate to reach out to me on Instagram and DM me like your thoughts and we can have conversations whether you are white or black. DM your girl. Um, because I do want to have a conversation about that because people don't have those conversations. We don't talk about how hard it is being in a work environment. And not only are you the minority in the world, but then you 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 in the world, you're a minority. Your workplace is a minority. The only place that you're really a majority is probably your church and your house. That's it. And then everywhere else, people looking at you like, why are you here? Like, um... And then another thing I wanted to talk about was right now I have been had a, having a very hard time coming to grips with the fact that I cannot protest because I'm a very vocal person, as I already stated. And the reason why I can't protest is because those meds that are back there on that nightstand are suppressing my immune system, which causes me to now be a high risk person to catch the coronavirus. And so I'm not supposed to be going a lot of places. I have been going to the gym though but i'm not supposed to be going to protest with thousands of people and so uh stephanie is not letting that happen neither is carlos we have gotten into arguments uh about this situation of the fact that i really want to go out and protest and so my mama was like protesting is not the only thing that you can do there are other things that you can do so you need to go sit in your room and you need to figure that out um so that's what I have been doing. That's not really what I want to do. But eventually, these posts are going to die down. The news is going to stop talking about this. And the protests will come to an end. And then what? This is all great. Do not get me wrong. Protesting, us posting on social media, the news, actually being vocal about these issues, those are great. But when that dies down, then what? So the then what, this is the then what, here we go. I have been researching different organizations to donate. So bail relief funds, uh, NAACP, Black Lives Matter movement, uh, here in Memphis, the Mid-South Justice and Peace Center, um, Bridges, which is an organization that helps children from all different backgrounds of Memphis come together to figure out how to make Memphis a better Memphis in every aspect. There are so many different organizations in my city um, that I know about. I'm going to put organizations worldwide or nationwide because you may not live in Memphis. So um, you may be like, I don't really want to donate today because I don't live there. But 
worldwide, nationwide. I'm going to put different organizations in my comments below because that is also very important. This speaks. So that's another way to, to be active and to be vocal about what's going on. And then once you do, you do donate, challenge members of your family, your friends, your, your following on social media. If you are another YouTube YouTuber, challenge other YouTubers. Hey, I donated $25. I challenge you to donate $25. Y'all, $25 adds up pretty fast. I mean, think about how many people you could get to donate $25. And here we are probably getting somebody out of jail for protesting. You feel me? So I think that is so, 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 so important. I've been having a hard time because I'm like, no, I want to put on my all black. I want to make my sign. I want to be out there. I don't want to be a, be a part of the chaos. I want to be in the front leading and being vocal. But God said, no, not right now, sis. I got something else for you to do. And so here I am telling y'all, it's okay if protesting is not for you. It is okay. So make that post that you've been making on Instagram. Be vocal that way, but also donate. Because eventually this is going to die down. The stories are going to stop being told. And we're going to go back to life as is. People talking about the election. People talking about the coronavirus, which is also a threat to the African-American community, community because that is killing us right now. Not only is police brutality killing us, but coronavirus is killing us at a high rate. So once this died down, then we're going to go back to life as, as we all know it. And then what? And then what? So keep that in mind. Um, another thing, we want to protest and want to speak on Instagram, which are, once again, all great, great things. They're great. But let me explain something to y'all. It will mean nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, if come election day, we do not vote. And when I say we, I mean the black vote. If we don't vote, all of this that we are doing right now will mean nothing, nothing. Um, I am not gonna say this since I turned 18, I have voted at every election. No, because I have worked at jobs where I have worked, 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 and I'm like, I couldn't make it to the polls. No, we need to make that a priority. If you can early vote, then you need to be there at early voting. That's just that simple. A lot of times, um, also I have, found out that we don't know who we're voting for. We just go in <laughs> and we vote whoever signs we have seen a bunch of times on the street. No, that's not what we need to do. We need to find out who is running in our district, in our county, in our state, read up on them, read what their agenda is, and we need to vote. I mean, it's just that simple, y'all. Like, we're not going to get any change if we don't votes um so i know elections are coming up some already passed this week in some states um but if your election day has not came up this is the time right now to educate yourself who is running why are they running what are they standing for do you agree with it we don't all have to agree who we vote for i'm not here to tell you to vote democrat or republican independent that's not what i'm here i'm just saying if you want to see some change we need to vote we can't be out here protesting and making posts and telling people what they need to do and what they don't need to do. And we ain't even going to the polls. That don't even make sense. You know what I'm saying? It, it just don't make sense. Um, a lot of people don't agree with our president. I'm not saying that I do or I don't. What I believe is if we vote come November, then, you know, we could have a different president. So take heed to that. Vote, 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 and uh, vote. Um, lastly, if you are a white person, check on your black friends. Check on them. This is very draining on our mental, I must say. Like, just being black, it's a lot. Like, I'm going to give you some examples. 
um white privilege is so real and if you don't know what white privilege is white privilege is being able to walk out your door and never worrying if your son your mother your daughter your husband will come back and not have been shot by the police white privilege is being able to change your hair and somebody just saying oh girl that's so cute versus can i touch it or how you get that White privilege is you being in an AP or honors class and people just thinking you smart versus you being in an AP class or honors class and you're black and somebody expects for you to speak for the whole race. White privilege is when somebody can just say, oh girl, you're so cute versus you're cute for a black girl. That's white privilege. So imagine you going through your day and those are the things that you hear people say every day of your life. Um, it's hard. It is really, really hard. Um, it's all I can say, like, it's hard. I don't have any other adjectives to describe that. It's hard. It's mentally draining to turn on social media, something that's supposed to be fun and exciting and you just keep seeing people die senselessly. Like, I, I don't get it. And people think that, oh, it's okay. I saw somewhere one mayor in Mississippi said, well, if he said that he couldn't breathe, he was still breathing. Huh? Like, seriously. Like, so check out your black friends because it is really hard being black in this world. But that's all I have for y'all today. Um, if you don't believe in God, if you don't believe in Jesus, if you don't believe in prayer, this is my goodbye to you. But if you do and you want to stick around, I am going to pray. Um, because I think that's what we need the most right now. Um, I think right now, if you are a faith believer, you need to have faith and trust in God more than you ever have, ever have. That's all that we have right now is God, literally, knowing that he knows what is and isn't to come. He knows, he has us, like, in his hands. He knows my name. He knows your name. He will protect us. The people that we think are supposed to protect us, the police that who are not protecting us, God will protect us. And so I just want to pray for our country, for our minds, um, for black people, white people, all people. I just want to pray. So here we go. God, we come before you saying thank you for, for today. We thank you for allowing us to be here. We thank you for allowing us to wake up today. God, I thank you for all the people under the sound of my my voice, I thank you for all of the homes that are represented in these views. God, I come to you right now and I'm asking you to help, to help our country, to help our world, God, to help us respect the differences of one another. I pray, I come to you asking you to help our leaders, God, give them what to say, what not to say, what to do, what not to do, how to go in, how to not go in. God, I pray for the people on the front lines, the, the protesters. God, I, I pray for their safety. I, I pray that you give them what route to take. I pray for the people that have been arrested for protesting and riots, and I pray that you give them grace. God, I pray for people's, their mental right now. You see and you know. I may not know, but you see and you know what is going on in people's heads. And only you only you because as i say all the time once the devil gets your mind that is it and i pray for their minds i pray for people to be able to reach out and say hey i need help can you help me today is just not a good day god i pray for us to realize that in order to believe in you faith without works is dead and if we do not vote and if we do not stand up for what we believe in, how can we expect for there to truly be change? God, I appreciate you for allowing everybody that is under the sound of my voice to be here to watch this video. I thank you for them. I truly thank you for them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
and that concludes today's video if you enjoyed this if you like this make sure you give it a thumbs up like comment subscribe and share it um if you have any black owned businesses either dm me on instagram and highly beautiful put them in the comments below so that i can shout them out i can make awareness so people can know and if you know of a black owned beauty supply store or a black owned grocery store in memphis tennessee let your girl know because that is what i am looking for at the current moment and uh until next time bye